Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this Metaballs project. Now, if you've ever worked in a 3D application, you might well be familiar with the concept of Metaballs. Basically, they look like this. It's modeling using spheres that kind of glue themselves to each other, depending on their proximity. So that's the effect that we're going to replicate in motion. So let's get started. So for my project setup, I'm going with 1920, 1080, 25 frames a second and a duration of 20 seconds. And the first thing I want to do is come over to the library and 3D objects and shapes. And I want to look for sphere and bring that in. And I'm just going to adjust its size by coming over to the 3D object controls, select custom. And let's go for unit size of two. So with this sphere, I'm going to make an emitter. So let's come to object and make particles. Let's select for the shape circle. Let's have random fill for the arrangement. And let's have a radius of 100. Let's set the birth rate down to about five. Let's make sure the life is long enough. So let's go for 25. Let's set the speed down to around 60 and maybe have 30 for the speed randomness. So just make sure to scrub along the timeline so you can see the particles emitting like this. A lot of people just park on the first frame and wonder why they can't see anything. OK, so what I want to do is I want to apply a scale over life to this emitter. So I'm going to come to particles, scale over life. I'm going to choose custom. I'm going to open up the editor here. I'm going to select these last two keyframes. Now, bear in mind, there's actually two of them. If you sort of start pulling them around, you can see that they're not being edited together. So you need to drag around both of them in order to change them. So drag around both of those, right click, and I'm going to use Ease In for that. Drag around both of these, right click, Interpolation and Bezier. And I'm just going to drag that handle roughly like that so they grow quite quickly. And for that initial custom scale, so bearing in mind they're both selected there, I'm going to choose five. So to create the actual effect, what we're going to do is we're going to select this group. We're going to come to filters and blur and Gaussian blur. And we'll also choose filters, color and levels. So I'm going to set the Gaussian blur amount to 64. For the levels, I'm going to open up the histogram, open up the opacity. I'm going to set the black in value to something like 0.49 and the white in value to 0.5. And it's created this effect. So you can see that those are now kind of gluing themselves to each other as they grow. So I'm just going to add a background generators color solid, drop that in there. Now, what we can do is we can actually light this, but we can't actually turn this group to 3D because if, if we turn this group to 3D, our effect disappears. So we actually need to put this group into a new group. So let's make a new group and drop this group into it. And we can make this group 3D. And that means we can actually add a light. So I'm going to increase the intensity of that to something like 500 and I'm going to move it out to the side. So negative 2000 on X and let's go for a thousand on Z and maybe just reduce the fall off down to one. So we can also make our background 3D. So turn on the 3D switch for the background and maybe just adjust this color. So this is what our effect is looking like. We've got this nice sort of meta balls effect of them all gluing themselves to each other. Looks quite nice. So we could actually give this light some color if we want it like this. Obviously it's affecting our background as well, but uh, you know, we need to trade those to off against each other. There are a couple of things I need to point out, however, about this. The first thing is that the majority of the lighting is actually being provided by the environment lighting for the original sphere. So if we look, select the original sphere, reveal environment lighting, and we turn that down, you see that they all turn black. So it's relying on those being lit by the environment lighting to get that 3D shading on those balls. So the other thing to know is that this 3D group is not quite what you would think it is. So I'm just going to turn off my background while I show you. 
And if I actually rotate it on Y, you can see that despite that appearance of 3D, it's actually a 2D plane. And the reason for that is that we've got this 2D group inside it, which is creating our effect. So you might wonder why we can't just put these effects onto the 3D group. So let's just have a look at that instead. So drag those on there and you can see the effect doesn't actually work like that. We can make it work by turning on the flatten button, but that's effectively doing the same thing as we were doing before. So if we rotate our group, we're, we're back to being 2D. So it doesn't really help to do it that way. So that's why we put those onto the 2D group and then put that into a 3D group. And you'll notice that the lighting really is lighting a flat plane rather than these 3D objects. But, you know, given those limitations, I, I think this effect is actually pretty nice. And, and there's lots of other ways in which you could approach it. You don't actually have to necessarily use an emitter. You could use a replicator or you could make each of these spheres their own thing and it would still work. I just used an emitter because it's uh, quite a simple way of showing you this. So just one final point I want to make is that if we want to increase the intensity of the lighting effect on those balls, what we could do is come to this 2D group and add another colour levels. If we just crunch the black on that like that, you can see we're just sort of getting more shading in there. And we could increase the white if we want as well. So you can see the difference that makes. It's looking quite a bit more 3D because we're increasing the contrast of the overall result. And there's just one final thing you might want to try, and that's to come to the 2D group and turn on the drop shadow and increase the blur all the way up to 100 and increase the distance quite a bit. Actually, go with 100 for that as well. And the difference that makes is it kind of gives you some depth. You may or may not like that, but it's, it's worth a try. So there you go, that's the effect. I hope you have fun playing around with it. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon.